The series of bad news never seems to end with Trudeau's government. While we are battling issues caused by his mismanagement, we have now been shown another piece of damning information, that our problem may continue yet and could even get worse. Some reputable Canadians working in the right field and who know their onions have predicted that our country might be bedeviled by a prolonged economic recession from 2023. This is what happens when the finance minister is a journalist who studied Russian history and literature at the University of Harvard. You know who I am talking about. Yes, that person is Christian Freeland. Before we head into the main details, let me welcome you to the channel. Front Page News is a channel dedicated to bringing you the latest news updates without the abundant and ill-concealed hypocrisy of the left-wing and legacy media. You can support our channel and its content by watching, sharing, and liking this video and our other videos. It would please us immensely if you do. We also love to hear from viewers. So please do leave all your comments and observations in the comments section below. Some economists have made predictions that if a recession should hit our country, Canada, within the next year, we will be worse off than the U.S. by that we are looking at worse than it currently is. Frightening, isn't it? Well, sadly, that's not all. An economist from the Macquarie Group, David Doyle, has said that the economy of Canada is in a dicey situation, a perilous spot because of its dependence and over-reliance on residential investments. What is a residential investment? All right, let me divert a bit. Residential investments refer to a type of financing where people construct or build houses and then sell them off for profits. Yes, that's real estate. It is known that Canada's economy relies heavily on real estate, and for the economy to thrive, real estate has to sell. It's funny that the fate of an entire country's GDP and the livelihood of Canadians depend on real estate. Statistics Canada released a report in the first quarter of this year that showed the significant impact real estate or residential investment had on the country's GDP. When in the first quarter, Canada's GDP advanced by 0.8 points, Residential investment advanced by 1.3 points, which was a 4.3% growth rate, and a pointer show that real estate grew by five times the growth rate of the GDP. When the country's GDP grew by $16.1 billion in the first quarter of 2022, it was found that real estate was responsible for 43% of the GDP growth. Can you see how dependent the economy is on whether houses are sold or not? That is simply sad. David Doyle said it himself that should Canada have a recession, the chief culprit would be residential investment, meaning that business for the real estate sector had been bad. Just as the economy's growth can be tied to the success of the real estate sector in whatever quarter of the year that happens. The economist also said that the incoming prolonged recession would lead to a yet higher rate of unemployment in the country. We already have Trudeau's incoming carbon tax threatening to take away jobs from Canadians, and now we have a potential recession threatening to do the same thing. Doyle also said that in comparison to speculations that the United States will face three or four quarters of GDP contraction, Canada would face a quarter or two more of that. By GDP contraction, it is meant that for those quarters the GDP will experience no growth whatsoever, and instead there will be a steady decline in the country's gross domestic product for that period. Recall that in May this year, the inflation rate hit a 40-year high, being the worst rate since 1983. And why? Because of the careless spending of Trudeau and his liberal government, coupled with their senseless financial policies, the governor of the Bank of Canada came in with a promise to keep inflation at a flat rate of 2%. But what do we have now? An inflation rate of 7.7% that has crippled any significant means of making money. Recall also that it was news once that the governor of the Bank of Canada had printed money on Trudeau's orders for reasons best known to the prime minister. If the Apex Bank's governor, Richard Tiffany Macklem, knew his onions and was truly the economist he said he is, he would have known better than to allow for more money to enter circulation, especially at a time when we were battling the economic damage caused by a global pandemic. But instead, he chose to listen to someone with degrees in literature and education in matters concerning money. Conservative leadership candidate Pierre Poilievre vowed to audit the governor of the Bank of Canada if he became prime minister. He pointed out the possibility that Trudeau may have influenced the Bank of Canada to print more money to handle his party's deficits, hence causing massive inflation. It is the job of elected officials to hold powerful people to account. When powerful people do damage to, the, to everyday citizens with their policies, it is our job as elected officials to call them out for it and to fix the problem. The reason we have inflation today is not because I'm criticizing the bankers and politicians who caused it, it's because they've created the cash that is driving up the cost of living. So you know who's damaging the credibility of the Bank of Canada? Justin Trudeau. By using the central bank to finance his out-of-control inflationary deficits, 
That's why we have 30-year highs in inflation today. That's why single mothers can't feed their kids. That's why 32-year-olds are living in their parents' basements. And if you think I'm going to be silent about that to protect the ego of bankers and politicians, then you're in for a surprise. Macklin was still out of hand in this, though, for choosing to forego his promise to Canadians and dance to the tune of the prime minister. Portly have pointed out that what the governor of Canada's Apex Bank had done had caused a housing inflation bubble. And if the bubble bursts, it would send a lot of Canadians into a black hole of debts, bankruptcy and mortgage issues. This is another reason why Macklem and his puppet master should be ousted from office. Also, you can't expect to get much from a government that has a career journalist as the country's minister of finance. Christian Freeland had no education in finance or economics, she was a student of Russian history and literature. And if you insist that her educational background shouldn't be a criterion, then you should be all right with having a graduate of computer science, for instance, as the governor of the Bank of Canada. There are offices in every government that need the best of the best in that field to head it, and the Ministry of Finance is one of them, because it is a crucial stakeholder in the cost and standard of living in any country. So having someone who is not well grounded in the matters of finance heading that ministry was sure to bring problems to our beloved country. What's your plan with this news of a prolonged recession coming in next year? Please do share your ideas so we can learn from each other and prepare well enough for the economic crisis when it hits us. Also, we would appreciate it if you tell us what you think about the video. It helps us with clues on how to serve you better. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Thanks for watching.